Hello everyone, this is Jozef Mat here and welcome back to the second part of the tutorial where I'm talking about transport equations. And in the first case I showed you the theory and what I want to do and I set up a base case, made co 11 copies of the base case and now we jump in to the simulation. Let's just start. Here we go, and let's take a look at uh, the list of our parameters. In the first simulation, I want to set the velocity to 0, 0, 0, and then the value for dt to 10 to the power of minus 6. So let's just do that. I want to set the value to 0, 0, 0, but already this was done with the set fields utility in the base case, so I don't want to cha change the value here. What I will change is the value here in transport properties to 1e minus 6. I save it, I exit. In the base case, I, I already executed block mesh, so I do not have to create the block mesh. I set up the initial values with the set fields utility in the base case, so and I made a copy of that, so I do not have to do anything additionally. I also set up the system folder with control dict and FV schemes and FV solutions. So now I can just start the simulation. Scalar transport foam, enter. And as you see, the simulation is very fast. I open it in Paraview. Apply. Now I show you t between 0 and 1 and let's take a look at what's happening and after 5 seconds nothing is really happening. <laughs> what's the reason for that? I set the uh, velocity to 0 so we do not have a convection term and I set this dt value to 10 to the power of minus 6 which is a very low value so really this term can be neglected also so you can assume here a zero which means that the time derivative of our passive scalar is more or less zero which also implies that the passive scalar is constant over time which means that it doesn't change and indeed as you see our scalar does not change over time at least not within five seconds. Let's take a look at the second case. So I enter the second case. I do not change the value here. I still want 0, 0, 0. But I will change the value here. And I will immediately execute uh, the solver and I will open up the re simulation results in this part of view because I want to compare the results but the location of the mesh is the same so I have to translate it I translate the case in part of view I will translate it in the negative y direction so we have the first case and the second case We have the same initial conditions and what is happening. Ah, as you see, there is something happening here and here. And what, what you see is a smearing of our scalar. Only on the border, it's very slight smearing, but still there is a difference. Now, what's happening if I'm setting an even higher value? I do not change the velocity, but I, will set, I want to use a value of 10 to the power of minus 2, so this is also correct, this was the value that I that came with open foam, so I will leave everything as it is, I have a velocity of 0, 0, 0, and a dt value of 10 to the power of minus 2, let's go to this folder, translate the geometry, so we can see the results, Go back, T, 
same initial conditions and what you see is now an even stronger smearing of our scalar and if I increase the value even more I will use the same velocity 0 0 0 and now I will change this value to 1 and execute the simulation open up the simulation results translate here to the bottom again same initial conditions and what's happening now this smearing is very very strong and not even after one second in this case after one second we do not have a maximum value of one anymore because the smearing is so strong and it is a symmetrical phenomenon so this is what diffusion means it is a smearing a diffusion of a given value regions with higher values of your scalar are being smeared in regions with lower values if you think of t as a temperature then in this case you would have a a region with higher temperature and with lower temperature and here you have a diffusion of heat from this region in this region this is basic thermodynamics or if you think of T as a concentration of uh, CO2 or whatever then you have a region with higher concentration and lower concentration and your molecules are going in this direction from the region of higher concentration in regions with lower concentration so this is diffusion good now let's go to the next case where i will set the dt value to zero and i will set the velocity i will change the velocity to one okay so changing the velocity to one to plus one in the x direction and i will change this value to zero to the simulation and open up the results translate okay so we have the same initial conditions and what's happening now now we have pure convection here let's compare the two phenomena what's happening now our passive scalar is moving to the right hand side and this is convection at your quantity so t t with a value of one is being transported with a given velocity and we set the velocity to a constant value of one in the positive x direction so one meters per second and as you see our scalar needs five seconds to move from the center to the right hand side with a velocity of one and this makes sense since our geometry has a length of 10 so this length is five five meters and our scalar needs five seconds to go from here to here with a velocity of one but as you can see you have a similar smearing of our scalar like here it's uh, somewhere between the value of 10 to the power of minus 4 and 10 to the power of minus 2 and this has nothing to do with the physical diffusion we set it physical diffusivity we set it to zero but in numerical simulations you will always have numerical errors and this is called numerical diffusion and you have to take care of that so if you think of a parameter study if you want to, to do this 
you want to take a look at different diffusivity values between 10 to the power of minus 6 and 10 to the power of minus 5 and the influence of that. But you will not see anything because your numerical diffusion is much much higher and your numerical diffusion will dominate your results. Then you have to take care of this and you have to change something. For example the discretization. I will not do that, this is the next tutorial, but I want to mention that you have these kinds of errors and if your parameters and your, the cha your change of parameters that you want to investigate are smaller than the numerical diffusion, then your simulations do not make sense at all. Because then your results will show the numerical errors, but not the difference of the influence of your quantity that you want to investigate. Okay, now I want to go on with the simulation. So now I want, will change the velocity to 0 0.5 instead of 1 so 0 0.5 and the physical fusivity of 0, 0.0 yeah, but I still have to translate it Where are you? Now I have to put it to ten point six. Yes, now we have it. Okay, so here we have now the velocity with 0 0.5. What's happening now? And you see that our scalar is now moving slower, which makes sense because we reduced the velocity by a factor of 2. And as you see, after 5 seconds, our scalar is located here at 2.5. The scalar needs 5 seconds to go from 0 to 2.5, it makes sense because we set a velocity of 0 0.5. Now if I change the velocity to 2, I hope you know what will happen, or you can guess it. Let's take a look if that really happens. Zero, and now let's say execute the simulation. Open up the results. Apply now, translate it correctly. Minus twelve point eight. Good. Same initial conditions, and now what's happening? Indeed, our scalar is now faster, twice as fast as this case. But also the numerical smearing is higher, as you see. And we, after three seconds, we do not have a scalar here because it already left our domain. Eh? Because it takes 2.5 seconds to reach the boundary with 2 meters per second. So uh, I hope now you see the difference between convection and diffusion. Convection means that you are transporting your quantity, in this case t, with a given velocity, in a given direction. We chose the positive x direction with a value of 1, 0 0.5 and 2. If we set the velocity to minus 1, then our scalar would go in the negative x direction. But a diffusion is com something completely different. There Nothing is moving with the flow, it is 
staying stationary but there we have a smearing of our scalar and this implies a change of our values in the cells and this phenomenon is symmetrical it is going in the both in the positive and the negative direction so now i want to set the velocity to one and i will change the dt values from 10 to the power of minus 6 to 1 and see the combination what, what what's happening then so the eighth tutorial change the velocity to 1 and dt to this value run the simulation open but translate first so to 16 no 15 yes now same initial conditions what's happening now our last case is with both convection and diffusion it's moving to the right hand side but it really looks like this case What's happening here? Now we have convection and diffusion, but our diffusion constant is so low, as you see here, that it does not make a difference. Our numerical diffusion is still dominating our flow. So our numerical diffusion is much, much higher than our physical diffusion. Now what's happening if I increase the dt value so I set it now to 1 and 1 e minus 4 good let's open up case number 9 apply now about translate to minus 17 good so before nothing really changed between these two cases and now as you see also in this case nothing is changing what's the reason for that because i already mentioned in here that the numerical diffusion, the amount of numerical diffusion is somewhere between 10 to the power of minus 4 and 10 to the power of minus 2. So also in this case, our numerical diffusion is still dominating our physical diffusion. So let's go into the next case. Set the value to 1 and now I set the value in this case to 10 to the power of minus 2 so this is correct I already set the velocity I will execute the simulation and let's take a look what's happening now so in the first two cases we had a movement to the right hand side but we had a numerical diffusion which dominated the flow okay what's happening now in the last case now you have a change because we have now a higher smearing so now what's happening here we have a superposition of the physical diffusion with the diffusivity value of 10 to the power of minus 2 plus we have our numerical diffusion so this is why the smearing is stronger here than here 
the numerical diffusion is not dominating anymore, but also our physical diffusion is not dominating, we have a superposition of both diffusions here. Now let's just go to the last case. velocity to 1 and the diffusivity to 1 and I will execute simulation open up the last case translate it correctly and take a look what's happening now same initial conditions and now as you see We have a similar diffusion as in this case, but our scalar is still being transported to the right hand side. But in this case, the diffusion is more or less the same as here. In this case, our physical diffusion is dominating the numerical diffusion. So what does that mean? That the mesh refinement and uh, discretization scheme is creating a certain numerical diffusion and we could not depict the change of uh, physical diffusion from 10 to the power of minus 6 to 10 to the power of minus 4 but we can depict the influence of a high diffusivity what do you have to do think about possibilities how to prevent it but this is the topic of the next tutorial as i mentioned before you have these two phenomena also in the navier-stokes equations and you solve the navier-stokes equations in most of cfd simulations and it is very important to understand the difference between these two phenomena and also you have diffusion and convection in other transport equations like the energy equation or species transport, temperature equation and so on. So I conclude now the second part of this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something, that you understand now the difference between convection and diffusion. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.